Hey Wargamers, Purple Druid presents Wargame Culture and today we are going to play a little game of Fistful of Lead. Uh, bigger Battles, yeah. So we are continuing the series with the same scenario from One Hour Wargames in our quest to find the best system to use for masked combats in the imaginations game and so fistful of lead i'm sure you are most of you should be aware is a fast and easy system that is very generic it's sort of like the uh generic universal war game system if you will and you can use any miniatures you don't even have to use miniatures we've discussed that before and uh, yeah, I mean, it works really well. Um, it is card driven. Whoever has the highest card goes first uh, for each unit so it can bounce around. And that actually makes it very, very uh, positive, I guess, for solo play because you can just deal out the cards to each unit and then you know uh, when each unit will go. And uh, you don't have to bear that cognitive load trying to decide. Now, I do also have the, I bought the PDF of Fistful of Lead Horse and Musket, which has, it comes with counters, so you can make blast markers and things like that. Um, and then it also has thematic rules, just the same rules as Fistful. Uh, however, the traits are more limited it doesn't have obviously all of them and it is you know themed to the uh, 19th century style of combat so we'll be using the fistful of lead horse and musket uh traits later i believe i think because i think i'm going to go with this for um the imaginations game but in any case bigger battles very cool um, how to increase the number of models you can have on the table or play fistful of lead with units rather than individual, uh, soldiers. So just a couple things, um, that are different here in the horse and musket style, using a loaded weapon in close combat gives you advantage. So you roll two dice and take the best score. Um, and as in regular fistful of lead uh, the traits are advanced or optional rules and you can even determine them randomly by drawing two cards one for positive one for negative and you can do this you know at the beginning of each game or you know in terms of a campaign we would do that at uh, generation of the unit or a generation of the leader or hero or commander in order to uh, you know carry that through from game to game but I'm going to give you a quick overview of the differences in bigger battles, the new rules that determine how you can uh, engage your units on the field. So number one, the biggest change is in regular Fistful of Lead, each model gets two actions. In bigger battles, each unit gets one. And they can only shoot one time per turn. And then we have rules related to formations. If you have units in what's called open order, you know, with just, you know, your skirmishers are out moving across the field like so in open order, uh, they do need to maintain one inch coherency. They don't have a flank and they have a 360 degree field of fire. Now you can uh, form up which means that these guys could line up into a column. I'm sorry, a line or a square, however you want to do it, ranks and files. And uh, then being in base contact, and they're supposed to have two ranks. I'm just not going to use that many miniatures today because this is just going to be a test battle. Um, when we do the official battles, we will follow uh, all the guidelines and have more miniatures on the table. But for close order, 
You may use a feature called Concentrated Fire, which gives you a plus one to your roll. You may also use Aimed Fire, which gives you a second plus one to your roll. Your unit will also get plus one in close combat. However, they do have a flank, right? So they could be charged in the flank and they do have a rear, so they could be charged in the rear. So that um, strengths and weaknesses with being in close formation, close order. Um, in addition, one final uh, weakness is that a unit in close order is plus one to be hit by crude weapons or artillery, such as the cannon we have there on the hill. Another difference from standard fistful of lead is that the unit has a number of wounds equal to the number of soldiers. We are going to continue with the assumption that each unit has 15 wounds based on the scenario from one hour war games. So what we'll do is we have, we have these little character sheets here little for tracking wounds. So for infantry D, they have three rows of five, so we'll just cross those off with a pencil as they take wounds. Morale is rolled into those wounds, so a unit remains effective until they are off the table, until they are out of wounds. And let's see here, what else? Uh, oh, events, page 37 in the book has a list, it's all the way at the back here. I should have marked that page, sorry about that. So page 37 has a list of random tactical level events to spice things up in the game. You can throw a joker into your deck of cards or two jokers and those can be used to trigger events. So um, when you draw the joker, you roll a d10 on this table and various things can happen. You find a shortcut, there's a straggler, you get local intelligence. Uh, where did this bog come from? Hidden terrain, an awesome idea uh, that we will also be incorporating in the Imaginations game via terrain cards. But that's something else that we'll cover on the Substack later this month. And the last part of the book has a variety of sample units for various time periods and genres which is kind of cool, uh, classical to medieval. Uh, what else we got here? Age of gunpowder. So, you know, there's science fiction, World War II, ultra modern. So there's a lot, there's a lot in there. And then we have little character sheets for each unit, which these will come in handy. Um, I think I'm gonna make my own, however, to incorporate the different leaders and their statistics and things that we are developing for the campaign. And then finally, we also have here um, various scenarios. There's three different scenarios in the book with a FAQ as well. So, bigger battles. <sighs> Excellent. Um, this is the game I think that we're going to use. We're about to do a play test, so stay tuned and uh, we'll get to that in just a moment. All right, so for the play test, we are going to go ahead and use the same scenario that we've been using from One Hour War Games. And in this particular scenario, the red force has six units and the blue force has four. The Red Force starts with one unit on the table. We have been working with the artillery, so we're going to keep them on the table. And because they are in close order, we're just gonna call that a unit. They have a 90 degree uh, fire arc, 45 degrees to each side. We also have the, on the red side, we have um, infantry. So this will represent 15 hit points worth of infantry, 150 men, however you want to uh, think about it. So there are four units of infantry on the red side and then one unit of cavalry. Uh, theoretically, the infantry units could break up into open order, uh, but for the purposes of this playtest, we will maintain the regular infantry in close order. 
Uh, likewise, the cavalry, I think, will do that as well. However, with the rules saying that any unit can be close or open order, it may come in handy uh, or be desirable to change that around for the imagination's game. Now, the blue side also has three units of infantry, and then they get one unit of skirmishers. So because they're skirmishers, we will be using the open order rule for for these guys. So they will be maintaining a one inch coherency as they move across the board. And it also gives them different, um, different distances that they can move. We are going to be using the inches. So that way we don't run into the problem of running out of game time before we run out of table. So these are the forces we'll be using. Um, and we'll go over deployment in just a second as soon as I move the camera. So here we are with the battle, the actual setup here. The only red unit that is on the table right now is the artillery. And I decided to make one small change just so we have a little bit less dice. I'm not sure how it'll affect the game. It may be big, it may be small, but we're gonna go with 10 hits on each unit because primarily because I only have 10 dice and I don't want to be rolling twice and try to remember because that trips me up frequently. So the blue force moves onto the table in this section of the board. This line is the edge of the table. Otherwise they have free reign of anywhere they want to go. They do need to exit in the north side of the northeast corner. And as I mentioned, with Fistful of Lead, you use cards to determine who goes when. So we're just gonna go ahead and deal those cards out and, uh, and see what happens. So first of all, we have the King of Spades for the Skirmishers. Two of Spades for unit number two. Jack of Clubs. And a wild card for the cannon. We have two of diamonds. So the cannon is going to go last. Well, that will pretty much fit into fit into the, the scenario layout. So we've got that. One more thing I did want to mention. The cannon itself has 18 and 36 inch range for shot. And we're going to use the six inch marker for canister in case anyone wants to get close enough, they'll use canister. So starting with King of Spades, we're going to go ahead and bring our skirmishers on the table. Infantry can move six inches or they can do a move with the double, which is to say 12 inches. They can also do a maneuver, which means they can make a single move and shoot at minus one to hit. So I think what we're going to do is the skirmishers are going to try to take on the cannon. And so they can make a single move come on the board up to six inches and again the skirmishers have 360 degree field of fire and they just need to be one inch apart so that hits so for their maneuver they will then take a shot now they are more than nine inches away so they will be at minus, uh, I'm sorry, no, they have to roll an eight plus in order to hit. So they get 10 dice. And then the other thing to keep in mind, if we get more ones than we get hits, then uh, that's going to be a problem for the skirmishers. So we don't have any ones. We need eights. And we only have three. Three hits. 
And one quick change, there's actually only two hits because there's an additional minus one for troops firing at a war machine. So that would be two hits. So now we don't just take miniatures off. We need to roll on this table and they can either take a shock marker, take a wound or two wounds, depending on what we get. So one to five is a shock marker and six to eight is one wound. We get a four and a 10. So that'll be one shock marker and two wounds. And moving down the line, we have a Jack. This unit number three, they will get plus one in close combat. We're not going to have any close combat. So I'll just go ahead and move at the double, which will of course be then 12 inches. And let's go ahead, we'll just play these as, a, let's say, a 10. What the heck? They can't really do anything with that wild card. They will move on. And they will also move at the double, which will allow them, they can move through a unit that is not close order. So we'll put them right there. All right. And I think what we'll do, two of spades goes before two of diamonds. They can roll two dice in shooting or close combat. So they're going to maneuver. They get to roll two dice and take the best. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to Bring them on like so. They're going to rush the cannon crew. Now they get to roll two dice. The range is 10 inches, so they'll need eights. However, they maneuvered, so that's minus one, makes it a nine. They're shooting at the war machine, that makes it a 10. So what we're going to do is we will roll 10 dice and then we'll roll 10 dice again. So for the first five, we do not get any tens, but we do get a one. So let's keep that in mind. If we get more ones, that means we're low on ammo. And then we roll again. And we get one 10. All right, no more ones, so that's good. We do not have more ones than tens. So we'll roll again for our results. That is a two, that will be one more shaken token counter, one more shaken counter. So that's two. Now, the cannon will get to fire. Typically the cannon would fire three dice. However, they have a two means they get to roll two dice, so that'll be six. However, they have two shock markers, so that'll take away two, so they'll only be rolling two dice, and they're gonna go ahead and fire on that unit there. And they, can, they get a 10, so that will hit. They'll roll again for another 10. That will be two wounds. On there. And so that'll be the end of turn one. For turn two, we're going to go ahead and shuffle these back in. cards and then we shall deal 
Oh, there we go. Five of clubs. Seven of hearts, four of hearts, ten of hearts, eight of clubs. So our ten will go first. Ten, eight, seven, five, four. Very interesting. Very interesting. All right. Our 10 is going to march at the double, so they will move 10 inches. Our 8 is going to maneuver. They will move 6 inches, and they're going to lose 1 inch for coming up this hill. I believe. Let me double check that. No, that actually counts as half move. So instead of being able to move two inches on the hill, they can only move one. And then they're going to go ahead and shoot at minus one. But again, that's minus two. So that will be 10 dice and they need 10. And we have one. And with a one, that will be another shock marker. And now the cannon will be unable to fire. And they have done what they needed to do. Outstanding. All right. For the skirmishers. They can re-roll a die. The skirmishers are going to move it double on the double. So they can go 10 inches. These fellows here are not going to fire. They are going to concentrate fire, which will give them a plus one. He can't fire. He has got the five, but he can't shoot. They're going to get a plus one. The range is more than nine, so they will need nines to hit. One, two, three. Three hits. And we have a nine, a ten, and a two. So that will be four wounds and a shock marker. That will be the end of turn two. On turn three, at the north end of the board, we have some reinforcements will show it. So they'll get a card this turn. So once again, we have to shuffle these in. for you so you don't have to watch me do this all right so the cannon 10 cavalry 10 infantry 7 infantry 
I'm sorry, skirmishers, infantry, infantry, infantry. All right. So we know the red forces are moving on the table. Ace is wild. Oh my goodness. Uh, somebody needs to go first before that cannon does. The skirmishers. Skirmishers are going to move with the double. Let's see if they can't get into that forest. Which I think they can. They certainly can. Now 10, for 10, so our cannon is going to try to do a rally, which will be, they get to roll four dice, and on a five plus, they can remove one of the shock markers. They get one die per shock marker, and they get two. So two of those will come off. The other ten is for the cavalry. They can move eight. They can maneuver. They can even dismount if they want to and fight, or they can charge. And that charge will give them a plus one to their combat. So if they have, if they have 16 inches, they can charge this unit here which is closer than this unit. So let's see if they've got the distance. If they don't, they'll just have to move eight in that direction. And they don't have that. So they're going to move eight. So they'll be right there. And for nine, This infantry unit here will go ahead and fire. It is long range, so they'll need eights. So what they're going to do is concentrated fire. That will give them plus one. So they'll need uh, eights rather than nines. They have two hits, so we'll roll two dice for the cavalry, and they get two shock markers. And now we have sevens. Seven of spades goes before seven of clubs. So, let's come over here and move on six inches. I'm sorry, yeah, six inches. will be the red infantry and now the blue infantry. They can re-roll one die or they can re-roll their dice, let's put it that way. So again, we are out of range. They can do concentrate fire, which will give them a plus one. So they will need nines and they can re-roll. Can they re-roll all their misses? Let me double check that. 
So they can re-roll one die or they can re-roll all of them, not just misses. So let's see, uh, let's see what we got here. We need eight, nine, 10, nine. So we need nines. And we have two tens. Two tens. Let's re-roll one die. That's a three. So we have two hits. And for those two hits, we get a one and an eight. So that'll be one wound and one shock marker. All right, and for our last unit, these infantry will shoot. And they are within nine inches now. So that will be a five plus. They need a six plus for shooting at that, but they can do concentrated fire, which they will. So that'll be back down to a five. So now this should give us some serious hits on that. Artillery. Oh goodness. No. One, two, three ones. And then for fives. One, two, three, four, five. So yes, they do five hits. And they get three, four, five wounds and a shock mark. And that's actually going to take them out because they were already at 7. And we said we were going to go to 10. So that will take out this cannon. As a casualty. And that's the end of turn 3. Alright, here we are turn 4. So we have... The cavalry, the red infantry, the skirmishers are unit one, unit two is down here, unit three is here, and unit four is here. So this should make for something interesting. Infantry unit number two, they're going to go first. They're going to call this a king of spades. So they will go first. They're going to do a double move, which means 12 inches. And they're going to head for the road. King of hearts. of hearts they are going to consolidate their fire and fire on these cavalry they are out of range so that'll be minus one plus one for consolidating so they will need eights to hit Ten, a nine, two hits. All right. And that will be two shock markers. Ten of spades goes before the ten of clubs. So the skirmishers are going to move to the edge of the woods. They certainly can. Yeah. 
then they will shoot at the cavalry. They need fives for being in close range, minus one for moving. For maneuver, I should say, maneuver. So they'll need sixes. Uh, we don't have any ones. That was not a good roll. Four. Four hits. And one shock marker and four wounds. The next high card is the Ten of Clubs. They are going to maneuver and fire on the skirmishers. The skirmishers are in soft cover, which will be a minus one, minus one for the maneuver. They would normally hit on fives, now they'll hit on sevens. Don't have any ones. So we have three hits on the skirmishers. One shock marker and three wounds. Number four is going to do a march move, a double move for 12 inches. And so they can only, they're going to lose an inch, a half a move off the hill. So that'll put them at 11, which would be right there. Finally, our cavalry will go on the six. Now, this time, they will be able to charge this unit here. Now, they're going to be minus, oh, they're minus four inches, so they can only go eight. All right, they're going to, uh, they're going to rally. So they'll roll four dice, and they need fives. And I just lost one. So they are able to remove. Oh no, they have five shock markers. Oops. <laughs> That's a lot of ones, man. All right, so they are able to remove one shock marker. And that will be the end of the turn. Turn five. We have our cavalry, we have the red infantry. Unit one, skirmishers. Unit two, infantry. Unit three, infantry. Unit four, infantry. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay. So. The skirmishers I'm going to fire on the cavalry. They have a shock marker, so that'll be minus one. So they'll be hitting on fives with nine dice. I'm sorry, I apologize. Yes, fives with, because they can't do concentrate fire. So, they need fives. Wow, okay, five hits. That's awesome. For the blue skirmishers, and what does that mean for the cavalry? 
Ouch. Two. No. One shock marker. One, two, three, four, five, six hits. They've already taken four, so that will take our cavalry out of the game. That may very well be the end of things because these fellas don't come on until six. So let's see what happens. Uh, who's next? Nine. Number nine. We are going to do a march move. Double time. 12 inches. Then eight is going to do a double time. Twelve inches. Number seven will do a double time. Twelve inches. And then two gets to roll two dice. I think their best bet is still going to be to shoot. They can concentrate their fire, which will give them a plus one, negating the cover bonus. And they can either, yeah, so we'll do five and five. So, we'll take the best five here. Oops, that's a nine. So one, two ones. Take the best five, that's gonna be five hits. Next will be one, two, three. That's eight. They were already down three, so the skirmishers are going to be wiped out. And that'll be the end of turn five. Oh boy, let's shuffle some dice. Let's shuffle some cards. For turn six, the last of the red reinforcements will get to come on the board. So let us start with blue. Blue two. Blue three. And blue four. Red. Already on the board. And then we have B, C, and D down here. B, C, and D. Oh my goodness. All right, this is gonna be exciting. So our high is going to be B with the Queen of Spades. And they are going to do a double time. Yes, they're gonna do a double time. Should they do a double time or should they just do a maneuver and take a shot? Eight plus, nine plus. Oh my goodness, that's a tough one. They're gonna do a double time. They are gonna come on the board running. 
So that's B. So, Queen. Queen of Diamonds. They are going to maneuver and turn and shoot here. They need fives minus one for their maneuver. So that'll be sixes. Three ones. Two fives. Hmm, no hits, so they are low ammo. We're going to get an ammo marker. The, oh goodness. Trying to win this. So we are going to move at the double time. Next, we have a 10. And they are going to maneuver. They will have a shot here. However, they need eights. Minus one for maneuver. That will be nines. One hit, but there's two ones, so they'll have low ammo also. And with a one hit, that's an eight, that's one wound. And I just picked up the wrong card, didn't I? Yes, I did. Nine is for the blue infantry. They are going to double time. The best they can do is about 10 inches because they can't move through that unit because they're both in close order. seven let's get these out of the way we'll come on six inches no they're gonna double time they're gonna just move right up here And then infantry four will do double time and that will be able to take them right off the board for victory. So we'll put them there.
that will be the end of turn six. For turn seven, we have Red Infantry. We have Red Infantry B, C, and D. Well, that didn't turn out none too good, did it? And for the blue, we only have two left. So Infantry Unit 2 and Infantry Unit 3. Three. Okay. So, what the ammo counter means, low on ammo means they can only roll five dice rather than ten, or they can spend their activation reloading. And that is... That, ay ay ay. They don't want to do that because they have no one they can shoot at. Oh my goodness. Alright, so I guess uh, they'll do a maneuver when it gets to be their turn. But for right now, we are going to maneuver here. We can move six inches, and with any luck, and within 18, which they are. So they'll hit on nines. Of which they get one, two. That will be two shock markers for infantry unit two. Very interesting. So now their movement is down to four, so they can only double time eight inches. It's their turn to go. Can they get off the board? Let's find out. And answer it is almost exactly eight inches for them to get to the edge of the board so the answer is no they cannot get off the board they will end their move here the move for blue 10 for red 10 they can maneuver they will go six inches all right i messed that up the spade should have gone last. So we're going to subtract 8 inches from this distance, which is 17, which brings it, it's over 17, which is still over 9. So it'll still be long range for them. So they can fire on that unit. And we'll see what happens. Eights, nines, and then nines. They get one, two, three, seven, eight, five, two, one, four. They get four hits. Well, let's see what that does. One, two, three, four, five, six wounds and a shock marker. So they'll have three shock markers, which will bring them back two inches. And six more wounds. Yikes. Three, four, five, six. 
All right, so that's the tens. And for a seven, we need to get this shot in. So they're going to maneuver six inches. which puts them within nine, so they'll need sixes. But they only get five. One, two, two hits. Two shock markers. This unit is going to maneuver. They are within 18. They've maneuvered. They'll need nines. There's only one one. But they do get three hits. And that's two shock markers and a wound. So, four shock markers. Oh my goodness, that's going to take four inches off their movement. They can only move two inches, which means they can move four inches at the double time. Do they have four inches if they double time off the board? Yes. Yes, they do. So this unit is able to get off the board and as blue only needs two units to escape the board on the road, that means that blue will win. I like this a lot. I do, you know what, I have to say, I have been playing Fistful of Lead as a con game at conventions for the past year or so. And I have to say, it's fast and simple and fun for a convention game. And I believe that uh, that this is what we should use for the Imaginations game. So, so that's where we are with that. Now, what if, what if we go back and check out our casualties in terms of the campaign. I'm going to hit pause for just a second and rearrange the camera and we're going to take a look at our at our wounded here. All right, so for campaign purposes, three units were wiped out. The blue skirmishers, the red cavalry, and the red artillery. And over here, we have a blue unit that took eight casualties. Everyone else is hunky-dory. So for the campaign carnival rules, what we said was that on a one to four, on a D8, the models were scattered and will be able to return to the battle for the next game. On a five or a six, they're injured and will not be able to return for two weeks. And on a seven or eight, they're actually dead. So let's go ahead and roll 10 dice for each of these three units that we wiped out. And we have one, two that are completely dead, uh, fives and sixes are wounded, and then one, two, three, and four. So 
five of them were scattered and will be able to return for the next battle. Three of them are wounded and will not be able to return until uh, for two weeks. And then two of them are altogether dead. So if I were playing this as the part of the campaign, I would put two X's on here. And so this would be a, a below strength unit of only eight models. Likewise with the cavalry, let's see what happens with them. Cavalry, oh goodness, eights and sevens, eights and sevens, six and five. So four of them are scattered, two of them are wounded, but four of them are dead. Yikes, that's a, that's a big hit. And for the crew of the artillery, we have one, seven, and then five. So we have four. Five scattered, four wounded, and one dead. So again, these are uh, these are some serious numbers. So it's going to have a big effect. And then for the last unit of blue that had eight casualties, we have one dead and one wounded, whereas the rest were simply scattered. So. Maybe we should come up with some rules for cowardice, perhaps. If you get more than more than 50% are scattered, maybe they are not a good unit, their morale is low, they take a penalty, I don't know. But uh, something to think about. Might make the campaign a little more fun. But uh, yeah, so there you have it. That is Bigger Battles by Fistful of Lead. I want to thank everyone for watching. I know we're over an hour on this, and I apologize for that. It just... This is a fun game. It's more it's more detailed. There's more moving pieces than are found in the one hour war games. But I think this is the right amount of detail. We can also add in different properties, um, skills, special abilities, that sort of thing, as well as penalties. So yeah, definitely, I think that we're going to go with bigger battles for the Imaginations game. So once again, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Be sure to check out the Substack. We're going to have a lot more information about the Imaginations campaign over there. And uh, keep on gaming. <laughs>